Greetings, sunshines and sunnies. It is our Queen J Lotus Pimp Sun Kiss. Coming at y'all right quick, right fast? Maybe. With a royale review for my wife and kids. The season one finale. So season one, episode 11. Ciao. And I ain't gonna lie, I will get a little introduction of the blurb and all that shit, but I ain't gonna waste no time. I'm gonna get right into it. We start this episode off for once outside the house. And we're at this office with who seems to be Michael's accountant. And they're having a little conversation. We, we catch up in the middle of their conversation where Mr. Accountant Man is telling Michael that he just finished his quarterly taxes. That he just finished Michael's quarterly taxes. Okay. And he tells him that his business is in great shape. And one more year like this and he could retire. And Michael starts to like knock on his head or whatever. And old boy tells him, hey, I remember when it was a lot more hair up there, okay? <laughs> Disrespectful. Look, I don't think Damon Lance needs hair. He, being bald is his signature. That's how he posts to look. That's how he look his best. That's how he needs to look. Nah. Anywho. Michael gonna tell him, well, you know Lenny Kravitz, my friend. <laughs> and I ain't, okay, because Michael is still serving, even without the hair. And to me, he look better than old boy, his accountant, there is. But he asked him, when is he gonna get a life? You still working like a dog? What you gonna do? And accountant man tells him, man, I got a life, okay? I'm actually seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And he like, buddy, you work just as hard as I do, like 24-7, but I done finally decided to go ahead and pack it up go around the world and michael like what he said yeah man i got me a 22 year old girlfriend and a boat michael said what's the name of this boat the ss viagra <laughs> but he goes on to congratulate him and whatnot and our boy tells him that he's just feeling so alive and since they finished there why don't they just go ahead and get themselves a bill together and michael says nah man i'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up i gotta get home to the wife and the kids and mr accountant man tells him hey one beer ain't gonna kill you and Michael's like, mm, eh, ah, uh. but it fades out right there. And then we transition to Michael getting home. So we get indication that Michael didn't take him up on the offer. He was consistent in his decline and he went on to the house. But before he can even get through the door good, Jay is coming on down the stairs and he like, she like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry about Tom. And Michael said, what you sorry for him for? He traveling around the world with a 22 year old girlfriend. Only person we need to be feeling sorry for is his chiropractor. He done told me he never felt so alive before. So, <sighs> unfortunate because that's when Jay follows up and says, that's good. Cause he did. Dead. <sighs> that is so crazy. That is so crazy but i do have an appreciation for the way that they played that out because it gives like you know they're saying one minute you're here and the next that you're gone and that can be a very scary thought but that's also rooted in reality because a lot of people have experiences like this where they've been just seen somebody just you know had such a great experience of them in the moment and then boom gone you know and it's wild too the conversation that they was just having and uh, following up from the most previous episode where Michael seems to be having a lot of struggles surrounding um, gratitude, if you will. I feel like, you know, appreciating what he has and seems like he's been experiencing a lot of FOMO, you know, fear of missing out and uh, the grass is greener on the other side type stuff. So it's like, dang, you know, he keep being met with these different instances to like bring some enlightenment to him concerning my guy. You got a good thing going. Like, embrace it, appreciate it. And sometimes things are being put in front of you for you to better recognize the great of what you have, even though it's so very easy to look at other people's lives and situations and like beat yourself down about it. Like compare yourself, overly compare and contrast yourself to a point where you feeling like what you got is not as good even though life and God is trying to show you that you're doing great, actually. You really got things to be grateful for and to really cherish. And I do think, in a way, that's been a running theme that's been, like, gradually growing throughout this season. Michael embracing gratitude. Because, as been said before, 
Michael has been home um, a lot more now. And, and as Tom told him at the beginning of this episode, your business is doing really well. You got like one more year, you keep this consistency up with your business doing so good, you'll be able to retire. So that correlates with what I've been saying. His business has gotten to a point where he's been able to be home more. And, you know, we came into the season in the middle of it, in the middle of him, like getting to a point where he can like finally relax and spend more time with his wife and kids and seeing, you know, all of the things that he has jumped into the middle of. His kids are now a certain age. His wife is going to work and want to have bigger aspirations for herself. Uh, the two teenagers are going through their parallels of issues and then their own individual issues all at the same time. And he's having to tap into more of his femininity in order to come in and like low key, high key play catch up. And so, you know, bringing more things into his awareness of like what he's missed out on and what he needs to evolve and, and further bring to the table. Cause you know, it's like he's accomplished so much, but it's like still more to do in these other areas in his life that he's low key, high key uh, neglected in certain ways because he was putting so much of his time and his energy into his job. Not to mention, building greater gratitude for jay specifically okay because he has been doing a lot of complaining about everything jay is and ain't and everything their relationship is and ain't and it's like you know what it's gonna take what you gotta do to show you the worth that is still there but not too much of nathaniel to be honest because his own personal experiences outside of the relationship is what's really bringing him that different sense of fulfillment and showing him that he has greater things to fulfill for himself and for other people. But so we don't get too far, um, um, you know, deep into, you know, catch back up on that conversation as we go through the episode. So picking back up <laughs> in the middle of their conversation, Michael is shocked in a nigga named Paul because he like dead dead what are you talking about and jay said his assistant just called apparently five minutes after michael left him tom went out for lunch and he got run over by a cab and was killed instantly and michael was like by a cab it's hard for brothers to even catch a cab and he got hit by one and he was like bro this is so weird i just was with him and he invited me out to go get a beer and he was telling me that one beer wouldn't kill me and jay said well it surely kills him that's hell the, the beer didn't kill him honey the car did the cab killed him that is unfortunate that is unfortunate. But now, Michael is like having survivor's remorse in a way. Because he like, dang, I was just with him. I didn't go out with him. And he feeling like he should be dead too. And it's like, nah, dog, you were saved. You had, you know, you, you still got some, just some more stuff to do. And it's unfortunate what happened to him and all that. But I feel like God was clearly telling you, go home to your wife and kids for a reason. Because... You know, they still need you and you still need them. It's still a lot of life for y'all to live together. And that's not to say that Tom's life wasn't valuable and it wasn't still more that he could have done. But it just is like, it, it just gives you a lesson that you got to make the best of every moment and not get so caught up and putting all your eggs into one basket that when you do finally snap out of it and try to do some more stuff you end up getting hit by a cab you know <laughs> just the fact that like you know, we have a lot of time but every tomorrow is not guaranteed so it's definitely a must to allow yourself to enjoy and embrace and have a plethora of things that you're into but i do understand too that michael is probably feeling like dang i spent most of my time with this man working with him and having him work for me and i could have had these last moments with him you know chuckling having a good time maybe even thinking if if i had gone out with him i could have um driven us and he wouldn't have even been in a position to be crossing the street or whatever because i could have parked in the parking lot of the venue i could have parked right up next to the door and it wouldn't even been all of that like i could have played a part in you know saving his life and him not being dead right now so it's just totally, totally understandable. A whole lot of conflict and of emotions. And if you ever experience something like this, uh, any type of survivor's remorse of any kind, feel free, if you will, if you're feeling it, to drop your experience in the comments. But Jay tells him, thank God you didn't go out with him because then you would have been okay. 
<laughs> out in the middle of the street like him and what would your wife and your kids be doing? Like, ah, uh, okay. So, my just like, I know it's so bad. It was like, he just had half of his life and her whole life, his 22-year-old girlfriend, ahead of him. <laughs> my confetti. I love how they're implementing the humor into this, you know, very conflicting, dark situation. Very well timed, very well done, very well balanced. But Michael is expressing, expressing his gratitude, saying that, you know, he's glad he came home to her. And this is what makes him truly appreciate what he has. He tells her that he loves her. And she says, I love you too. And he's like, no, I really, 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 really love you. Like, totally, without a doubt, love you. Super califragilistic, expiolidociously love you. Done. King can't come up with the words that I need right now to express how much I love you. <laughs> And he like, you know what, from now on, I'm going to show you just how much I love you and the kids because you never know when it's over. Come here, baby. Come here. And Jay embraces him and, you know, is just very compassionate to what he's experiencing and what he's expressing. And she, she does also kind of have this conflict and look on her face. And I would imagine that a part of what's going on in her head is like, I've been wanting this. But damn, it had to come like this. Like somebody had to die for, <laughs> for him to get to this stage and like really, you know, show me some greater appreciation and love and comfort and all of this. So, yeah. But she like, baby, I got to go make some dinner. And he said, okay, I'm going to come with you. <laughs> and he has not let her go, honey. He's still hugging her while they're walking on into the kitchen. Now, we flash to the next scene. And Jay is in the kitchen and it's flowers. Michael comes in and she's thanking him for the flowers. And he's like, oh my goodness, it's a hell of a lot of goddamn flowers. They're some nice flowers, but good. <laughs> and he tells her, look, I just wanted to show you with action how much I love you by sending you all these flowers. And she said, yes, thank you so much. But it's just so many of them. Goodness gracious. <laughs> he said, I didn't want to tell you that I love you a little. I wanted to say I love you. He said, hey, baby, what a kid said. She said, honey, it's 3.15. They walking home from school. You got to give them time. He said, baby, how long does it take? She said, I don't know, Michael, about five, ten minutes. He said, what? Something happened to him. I feel it. I feel it right here. They got hit by a car. I know it, sir. Please come down, okay? And that's what Jay said. Please come down. They'll be here in a minute. And he was like, I just wish that they would come home. And they come on through the door and he runs on over like a little white lady. So I'm like, oh, my gosh. Hello. And there are more flowers all over the house. Goodness gracious. But he then picked up Junior and spun him around and looking at Claire and said, you know, you just get prettier and prettier about it. She said, like, you know what? That's true. And he brings them all in and he is like, you know, you guys are the best kids on the planet. And Claire and Tennis are going out because she said, uh, what's wrong? He said, no, everything's OK. Here, I want you to take some money and go to the mall. OK, buy yourself some nice dresses, some makeup or something. Just have fun. Just enjoy life. And you, Junior, you, you go out, get yourself. I don't know. Some fast food, rap music, get yourself a, a Playboy. <laughs> and they notice something is off, but they just, you know, accept the gifts and move on. And he stops them as they're walking off and it's like, hey, 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 don't you ever walk away from me without saying I love you anymore. Goodness. Because you never know when something could happen. Come on, say, I love you. <laughs> and he's going in. He's like, I want eye contact. Look at me. Look at me deep in my eyes and say, I love you. Enjoy your pieces. And Michael is looking at him with these little beady eyes. <laughs> and he's on in on Claire like, hey, 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 I don't hear you. So she goes ahead and say it. And he stops them again before they walk off and is telling Junior to go ahead and jump in his arms again. This is so fucking hilarious. <laughs> and he kissed Junior on the cheek after he done picked him up and hugs him again. And while that is funny as hell, like a part of why it's funny is because you don't usually see um, the father-son interactions like that, specifically with black fathers and sons. Um, but it's also really sweet. And as I said before, I love these displays of father-son affection between Michael and Junior because it breaks a lot of barriers and gives a different example that the world needs to see. Now, what seems to be the next morning, they are at breakfast, going through a newspaper, uh, Claire is looking at fashion, and um, Junior is fascinated with the back of the stereo box. Katie wants Claire to read her Snoopy, and then she asks, uh, she asks Junior to read her Snoopy. Both of them is not trying to give her the time of day, and Jay comes on over and is like, baby, I'll read it for you. Just come on. Then Michael walks in and he says, you know, I love some coffee. You look 
beautiful. Just got this magnificent sparkling your eye. Just, oh my gosh, even the crust in your eyes is gorgeous. <laughs> she just like, okay, thank you. Then he kneels down to Claire, all in her face, talking about I love you. All in Junior face, talking about I love you. Baby, just doing the most. <laughs> And he gets all up in Clay, uh, Katie gets all up in Katie's face and is telling her, I love you. And he picks up the newspaper to see, you know, just what's going on and all of that. And he's like, oh, my gosh, look at how many people died in New York City yesterday. Oh, my gosh, 52 people. Oh, and look, Junior, here goes someone your age. This is senseless. This is just senseless. And Junior says, how did he die? And Michael said, somebody beat him senseless. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Please. Then he say. 92-year-old woman, Eloise Matheson, traveled around the world four times, went up in a hot air balloon, and met Mother Teresa Barrett, four husbands, oh my gosh, lived a full life. Then he sees the article about Tom, and it just says, Tom Miller, 42, accountant, dead. Now, this done sent him up into a tizzy. Because he like, that's all it says? That represents his whole life? I don't want to go out like that. I want to be like Eloise. I want to bury four husbands. <laughs> and Jay walks over and has to, like, reel him in because she like, uh, baby, 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 baby. Breakfast with the cheering. Let us have breakfast with the cheering without a side of death. Okay? Relax. And Michael said, look, look, I'm not interested in death. I'm interested in life with a capital L. From now on, I'm going to live life to its fullest. Now, we get a quick flip transition, and he done bought a little bike, a 1959 Indian Chief with an original sidecar. Oh, my. He said he going to take all the leather seats off, and they going to go around the world. Oh, he said he going to take the leather seats off and fix them up. I'm like, why you going to take the leather seats off? <laughs> Let me know some child. Let me know some. And Jay said, uh, excuse me, excuse me, Captain America. Yeah. Uh how are all four of them gonna fit in the sidecar? He said, Look, we don't have to come here. And look, cross the street. She like, huh? What? What is that? He said it's an RV. A 39 foot blue bird wonder lodge. It's like an apartment on wheels. This is great. We're gonna pull the motorcycle behind us and we're gonna take it wherever we're going. I don't ever wanna be away from my family again. And Katie said, even when we go body. He said, except then. I'm going to let you do that by yourself, Shadi. <laughs> so, it's pretty clear that even though Michael is not, well, let me put it like this. He's having an early set on midlife crisis. Triggered by the grief of his friend. So sad. And once again, all of this, you know, love and affection that he's showing is beautiful. It's to be appreciated. It's what they've been wanting. But it's kind of tainted and distorted. Being the fact that it's being transferred by way of grief. And it's also like now it's excessive and super duper clingy and coming from a place of fear. So I guess it kind of gives you like a um, be careful what you wish for. Uh, being specific in things that you're trying to manifest. <laughs> hey, tisk. But we transition to the next scene. Everybody's linking up in the kitchen where the kids are linking up with Jay. And she look up like, uh, what? What's wrong? Who did what? And Claire says, listen, it ain't us. It's daddy. Okay? He needs help. And we need assistance. We are worried about him. Katie said, baby, he is cray cray. Looney tune. Look up in la cabeza. Okay? And, and apparently he's oversharing, telling them that he needed the workout. Because his butt cheeks going to be so strong that he's able to crack walnuts with him. <sighs> Baby, nobody needs to hear that. <laughs> nobody at all. Not even Jay needed to hear that. Please. And Cl uh, Jay is like, okay, what's all bad about that? What's, what's the issue? Like, what is the meat and potatoes of the situation? Claire says, honey, because he actually did. He cracked the walnut with his booty cheeks and gave it to us. And he, she hands jay the walnut my god today <laughs> and junior says he woke him up at six o'clock this morning to go lay on grass that's not that's not that bad you know that's yeah because jay's like what's up oh no okay yeah because jay said what's so wrong about that and <laughs> julia said baby the sprinklers was on no why he didn't turn the sprinklers off what <laughs> What's wrong 
wrong with him? Uh uh-uh. uh. Mm mm. Okay. Maybe he just wanted to feel all the essence of nature. Okay. The, the sunrise and the grass and the bugs and all that one enough. He needed a little water too. And since it wasn't raining, he created his own rain. Bless his heart. But Jay is impressing upon them to just exercise some patience and understanding. She's like, y'all, your daddy went to the funeral yesterday. Okay. And he hasn't even cried yet. He hasn't even gotten his grief out. So he's going to be acting a little strange for a while. But in time, things will get back to normal. All right. And just as she says that, he comes through the door with a dag on hairpiece on. Looking crazy. And I just told y'all that this man do not need no hair. <laughs> it's giving Kirk from Love and Hip Hop. <laughs> but he done scared the crap out of Katie and she done screamed and ran off. He's talking about what you think. Baby, was Katie screaming and running off? Not enough. And she tell Claire to go get her sister. Claire, get up and go. Junior's still standing there. She said, uh, go get your sister. <laughs> Basically, both of y'all get up out of here, okay? Just Because we need to address some things. And see, yeah, he could naturally get back to normal or, you know, an evolved state or whatever. But something has to be addressed, being the fact of how this is going. Because he's taking a good while to, um, let me not say he's taking a while. He's going through a lot to suppress his grief. And everybody handles grief differently. It's just, you know, like I said, something to keep an eye on. And eventually, something to potentially address so that it don't end up blowing up into even bigger and badder craziness, okay? Jay is trying to talk to him. He's talking about, oh, wait wait a minute. I got hair in my eye. <laughs> but no. And he's talking about, he feel 35 years younger. He feels like an embryo. Um, Wait. <laughs> he said, it's amazing. You know, it's kind of like Billy D. I feel like him in mahogany when he says, success is nothing without someone you love to share it with. And Jay said, you know, I was thinking more like Todd Bridges, different strokes-ish. Now, I ain't gonna lie. Jay talked to a shit with that one because that's exactly what it's giving. He is looking like Todd Bridges. Uh-uh, honey. This, 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 just like it's making me itch. <laughs> but Michael started talking about, hey, listen, that guy down at Hercules, that's where I got this from. From hair cures for men. Mr. Cures himself said he wants to take a picture of me. Uh, and do what with it? Oh, okay. He said he want to put it in a brochure between William Shatner and Steve Harvey. Oh, my goodness. I know how that can sound like a compliment, but a rub. <laughs> the jokes write themselves. <laughs> House and never. That is the joke. Because, wow, Michael doesn't recognize the joke. Damon Wayans definitely recognized the joke in that. <laughs> Petty boots. <laughs> Ooh, child. But Jay is not impressed. Jay is not trying to hear none of that, and she's honestly trying to figure out what to even say. And she says, look, have you thought about as to why you're doing this? And Michael says, because he went to the funeral, saw Tom in that casket, and he looked horrible. Jay said, baby, because he was dead. Michael says, uh-uh, because he was bald and dead. That's a bad combination. Um, is it? I mean... He came into the world bald, right, as a baby. I mean, all babies don't come out bald, but I would assume that, you, you know, he came out bald. Most babies come out bald. So, I mean, he came in bald. He went out bald. It, 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 it. This is just Michael being insecure and losing his mind. <laughs> Especially being the fact that, like, I guess one of the things, one of the last things they talk about, talked about was their baldness. So, he's trying to... I feel like he's trying to kind of separate himself from identifying with Tom in a way. He's trying to separate himself from uh, that fate. And he literally goes on to say maybe the cab would have saw him if he had hair. And saying that the hair might have cushioned the fall, okay? The hair needed to just pop him back up and carry him home? No, sir. Jay said, baby, why are you wearing that? No. Why? Are you sure that you want to wear that? He said yes. Because unlike Tom, I'm going to do everything that makes me feel good. And right now, hair makes me feel wonderful. And Jay is not comfortable with that. But she said, look, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you have it, darling. I'm going to let you have that. I'm going to let you do that in peace. I understand. And I support you. And he says, good. Good. Because I'm also going to sell the business. What? That's not what she should do, okay? I understand why that's, you know, something he thinks is a good idea because 
Tom already told him that he got just like one more year before he can retire. But he's also observing the fact that both him and Tom have spent a lot of their lives just working so hard and not allowing themselves to really enjoy and embrace and get the most out of life. And now here Tom is and died just as soon as he was about to ride off into the sunset with his 22 year old on a boat. So he like, why wait? Okay. Why wait? Because he thinking he could not wake up in the morning or and or go have an accident on the job or on the way to the job or whatever. He just like really on some YOLO type shit to the extreme and is feeling like he want to go ahead and just, just throw all caution to the wind and go in and let have. But again, while that's understandable and could work out i don't think he should do it i don't I don't think that's a decision that he should make in the mind frame that he is currently in and the reason being because like jay said a minute ago he hasn't even cried yet he hasn't even really set into the acceptance and the pure reality of everything that's happened not to mention he could sell his business and you never know what could happen with that. Okay, you get that money, you in the mindset that you in. Like I said, you get that money from selling the business and because you're in the depths of dissociated despair, you go blow it on something crazy and throw yourself and your whole family into a bind, Nate. Now what? Now what? Okay, so no, no, that's not the work. That's not the work, my guy. And Jay is absolutely correct in chasing him and being like, hey, are you inhaling the glue from that wig? What are you talking about? Michael says, I want to spend more time with my family. And it's not a wig, honey. It's a hair piece. Jay said, look, what about money, baby? And it is a wig because a hair piece has to attach to another piece of hair. Okay, get it together. <laughs> Jay is flaming your boy up. All in the midst of being compassionate and understanding and choosing with her words. She is choosing to shade the entire fuck out of him. All at the same time. And we love to see it. <laughs> but yeah, he's clearly out of his mind. Because he's talking about, we don't need any more money. And you have a job. We don't need material things. We have each other. Now see, all this double speaking, it's not even making sense. Because what are you talking about? Y'all don't need no more money. The hell? No money ain't everything. But y'all do need money. And you talking about living your best life. And getting the most out of life. And all of that. Do you know how much harder you going to make it on Jay? If you quit. And sell your business and then she is the primary breadwinner and the housewife. No. No. And they're talking about, we don't need material things. We have each other. Sir. Balance. 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 And again, double speaking, all the back and the forth in between one thing and the next. And it's all just grief laced and irresponsible and not thought out at all just just a fool and he's gonna say and, and are you sure because hair cue says it's a hair piece and jay says baby that thing on your head is a hat the only thing missing is a brim and a chin strap oh no but hey at least she being honest because that thing is a no it's a damn brillo pad it's a damn number two pencil eraser honestly i think a number two pencil eraser looks better than that shat taki on his head but Jay sits him down and says, baby, I want you to think long and hard about this before you make any moves selling anything, okay? Because I think you're just being a little irrational. Your business is important to you. You built it from the ground up. And he said, you know what? I'd be very happy if I never had to work another day in my life. Work has consumed me. And I've lost touch with who I really am. You know, just saying that I want to sell it makes me feel free. And Jay said, baby, let me just point this out to you, okay? Feelings are about the only thing in this life that are free. And Michael, think about this. Okay, what you do is a big part of who you are. Ooh. And Michael says, just remember, we both wrong. It's not a wig or a hair piece. It's a hair replacement system. <laughs> and Jay gives him the coldest look like she want to take her freaking shoe off. And just shove it all the way down his throat and rip it back out of his throat and beat him over the head with it until that hairpiece, wig, hair replacement system, whatever you want to call it, is off of his head and dissolved into the air. Next day, they gathered in the kitchen. 
Michael is coming in. And shout out to some extra kids up in. Oh my gosh. Ooh wee. <laughs> Ooh child. Oh gosh. <laughs> okay, so the kids clearly have a few friends over. If Michael comes in after having a, a joy ride on his bike, and <laughs> he takes his helmet out, and baby, that hair replacement system is pushed all the way bike pushed all the way bike on his head and he looks the fool the fool the entire fool and everybody is holding back tears of laughter looking at him while he just is going through his his little spill and his motions honey and he said i was just out there on my bike just riding around and the wind was hitting me in my face it was amazing Jay trying to tell him, he like, huh, listen, listen, listen. I just want to take you on a ride. You got to come out there and you got to experience this wind. My gosh, it's the biggest rush. And Jay said, look, Michael, just kiss me. And she pulled his wig down in the midst of uh, kissing him. Oh, my goodness. This is just embarrassing. And he says, well, if you can take your hands off me for a half a second, I'm going to go take a shower. I got to wash my hair. This feels so sexy with all these thick locks on my head, sir. Jay a good one, because I would have ripped that thing smooth off and hit him in the face with it. So we flash later on that night. They in the bedroom, and Jay is just looking completely over it, laid across the bed. And Michael comes out of the bathroom, singing, Turn off the lights, light a candle. And Jay says, I light a candle if you let me light it to your daggone head and cremate that piece of shack. She didn't say all the extra stuff, but she did say she light a candle if he let her put it to his head. And he said, hey, look, I thought you said you like it. Baby, when she said that? When did she say that? She been roasting you this whole time. <sighs> My goodness. But he delusional, just completely delusional. Somebody, I thought you said you like it. Jay said, let me put it to you this way, baby. You want me to take this off? You're going to have to take that wig off. And that's on period. But he said, it's a hair piece. Say, take the piece off. The piece, just say the piece. The piece, take the piece off. And Jay says it, honey. She said, take the piece off. He takes it on off and he puts it on the little mannequin thing. And he up there spraying it and talking to it. Talking about, I see you in the morning and all this other carrying on. Uh, no, no. And he just won't <laughs> leave it alone. He putting a do-rag on it and caressing it and just... <sighs> I cannot. He's talking about, see, this came with baby hairs. I like the little baby hairs, you know, like real pressed down and curly. And then you never know that you got a piece on because you got the little extra baby hairs. And he runs on over to my, here I come, here I come, here I go. Okay. And she said, yes, honey, this is the man that I love to see. And they is a kissing and a rubbing and a touching and a loving. And he say, wait, something's not right. I feel naked incomplete she said i know you have got to be kidding me he said i need freddie she said no 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 you do not need freddie he said yes i do like batman I need robin like popeye I need spinach i need freddie jay said uh, that is enough that is enough michael is like don't hurt him jay says listen michael kyle i love you he said i love you too she said shut up and let me talk i love you with all my heart and I know how much Tom's death has affected you, but baby, it's starting to affect the whole family. The kids are all hugged out. Ain't no more room for no flowers, okay? It's great. It's exciting. It's wonderful. But it's crazy. And this right here, Freddy, Freddy's crazy. And Michael says, I know it seems a little strange, okay? But it makes me feel good, you know? And hey, you two will get to know each other. And you'll become good friends. Don't ever think you're competing for my love, honey. Jay tosses that thing to him and says, good night. And lays it on down. He said it. <laughs> he got a thing in her face on my good night. She slapped that thing so clean, crossed the room back into his hand, knocked the whole wig off the mannequin. And Jay goes on to say, look, Michael, all I'm saying is that there's something wrong. And I want you to think about that before you do something that you regret that we'll all regret. And <laughs> he said he's trying to talk with the mannequin, talking about, say what? <laughs> But you can tell by the look on his face and his body language and everything that he's taking it in. And it's becoming impossible for him to continue to dissociate and deflect and act like ain't nothing going on or going wrong. And Jay says, you think I'm playing? He said, look, I'm kidding. Okay. Listen, I think about it. We'll think about it. <laughs> Jay's so done with him, child. Jay is so done with him. He's trying to put the thing in the bed to sleep with them. She said, ah, 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 ah. I'm out of here with that. Now, very interesting because, you know, usually, um, well, a lot of the times the episodes either start in the kitchen or in the bedroom with 
Michael and Jay. But this episode started at the office and the episodes usually end in the bedroom with Michael and Jay and or uh, I think maybe an episode or two ends in the kitchen. But they usually end in the bedroom with Michael and Jay. This time, the scene before the last was them in the bedroom. And this time, the last scene is in the kitchen. Now, Michael is at the table playing with his mannequin with the little chia pit on it. And he's singing to it. This song that is like indicating, you know, I can't go wrong. I got you, babe. And all this other mess. He, he's out of his mind, honey. He is out of his mind. Somebody's at the door. And he slaps this thing on his head. <laughs> For some reason, him having this thing on his head, to me, makes him look more like uh, Marlon. Marlon Wayans, his brother. I don't know what it is because Marlon don't wear his hair like this. But for some reason, him having this hair on his head makes him look most like Marlon to me. Even though I feel like naturally uh, him and Marlon look a lot alike. Um, They got different shaped heads and stuff like that. But him and Marlon really look a lot alike. And Kenan and Sean look a lot alike. Now, all of them look alike. But just out of the ones that you see, Damon and Marlon look the most alike. And then... I feel like Kim looks like a combination of all of them. But that's beside the point. <laughs> so, um, I think that this is one of Michael's employees at the door. It just looked like the uniform that he got on because it's a delivery person type shit. And it just looked like um, the uniform that he got on looks like the uniform that Michael's employees wear. Um, his name is Bruce, and he has a terrible chia pet on his head as well. And Michael says, hey, Brucey, and they both looking at each other like, oh, hey, I see you. We see each other, Hercules, yeah. You believe that? He said, you're not in the brochure, huh? That's what Michael says to him. And he said, no. But I saw you in there, Mike. You looked great, okay? You looked nice. First time I ever made a delivery to the boss house. Oh, yeah, that is one of his employees. And uh, Michael says, well, come on, have a seat. And Bruce says, I love to, but I'm swamped. I got another big delivery, baby, a grand piano, a third floor walk up. And Michael says, how you going to do it? You going to block and tackle? My child, I don't know what that means. <laughs> but Bruce tells him, nah, I can't, you know, burglary bars and such. And he said, actually, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. But nice to see you, Mr. Kyle. And Michael said, look, there's nothing going on around here. You mind if I tag along? And Bruce says, oh, whoa, that'd be like, that'd be like playing hoops with Larry Bird. <laughs> and Michael said, hey, yeah, let's, let's go on and get out of here. Let's go on and get out of here. Okay, so they go off to do that. And I thought that that was the last scene, but it's not going to be the last scene. We got one more scene that places us back in the kitchen by time for dinner time. Jay is in there doing her thing, whipping up something. And Michael walks in without his hairpiece. And he look a little somber. And Jay said, Michael, baby, you been crying? He said, yeah, you know, I had the most amazing day of my life. Let me set the scene for you. Baby grand piano, spiral staircase, we laid that baby on his side, took the legs off, wrapped it in a furniture pack, and we danced it up three flights. It was spectacular. And look at this. I got a $10 tip. And Jay said, yeah, okay, and that's why you was crying? He said, no, I cried because I realized I was so happy and so sad. At the same time, I was happy because I realized I love my life. I love my job, being bald, my wife, my kids. I have been living life to the fullest. And then I was sad because I lost a friend who never got the chance to enjoy life. He never got the chance to feel that love that I have. And Jay says, oh, Michael, welcome back. And he says to Jay, you know, you was right. I can't sell that business. That's my gift to my family. I ain't never going to let that go. And Jay says, I'm really happy to hear that. He said, I'm sorry. I was acting a little crazy. I went a little overboard. She said, it's okay. It's okay. He said, but I'm back. She said, good. She good. He said, where the kids at? She said, baby, I think they're a little hugged out. He said, nah, I want my money back. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well let that go, honey. Let it go. Let it go. Shout out to Elsa. Let it go. <laughs> now, child, that was beautiful. That was quite beautiful. That wig he had on was not, but all of that in its entirety was beautiful. And like I said before, it's great that they showed like kind of a dark subject matter, but they made it very lighthearted while at the same time showing like some of the stages of grief, um, 
a different form of grieving that is not really shown a lot. Whereas Michael was like doing a lot of dissociating. He went into this crisis type mode. He was being hyper affectionate and all of that. And I also feel like him going out to do the job with his employee um, kind of brought him back full circle because like I said before, I feel like a part of his regret with Tom is that he interacted with him mostly as like a business associate, as somebody who works for him. Okay, he didn't like give himself the opportunity to really just kick it with him and embrace him as just a person. A lot of their interactions was business, work. And him allowing himself to have that moment, even though they were doing a job with um, Bruce, he allowed himself to have that moment with Bruce, even though they were doing a job. They had a personal interaction before they went out. And Michael just being in a different headspace was likely able to interact with him and basically integrate the friendliness with the business element amongst the fact that he was working with him, like on an equal level. He wasn't being his boss. He was being his partner and his friend all at the same time. And it just brought him a different level of bliss and a different level of feeling purposeful. And that's what really like brought it into clarity for him. Like I'm doing the things I'm doing all of the big things, embracing all of the little things. Like we here, I ain't got to try so hard at this point. I'm blessed. And I definitely feel like that was a great way to end off the first season especially the conversation that he has with Jay in the very last scene where he's just going through the whole spiel. Like, I love my life. I love being who I am. I love looking the way I look. I love having my wife, my kids, my business. I can't sell my business. This is my gift to my family. You know, it's what he leaves behind. Like, he has created something that, you know, gives fulfillment and purpose to a plethora of other people. And it's something of a legacy to hand down to his kids and that he is able to Make a good quality and quantity of life for himself, his wife, and his kids. Child, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But definitely make sure that y'all are all caught up on all of the reviews up until this point. And let me know what you think about the first season. Uh, the order of it, the things, the running thing from episode one to this finale episode of the first season do you feel like it was a good start middle end do you feel like they could have done something better whatever what have you let me know your thoughts let me know your paralleling experiences to everything that went on in the show in this episode and all that and i myself feel quite fulfilled to have gotten through this first season yeah now the following seasons have way more episodes <laughs> but i am really excited to see how you know certain things from this first season carry on into the next season and you know what changes and all of that besides the girl that plays claire because shout out to jazz ray cole this was the final episode that she did because by next season we're going to have um, Jennifer, what is her last name? Can't think of her last name, but y'all know. Light skin clear. <laughs> I believe her last name is Freeman. I think her name is Jennifer Freeman. But yeah, we love to see her too. We love to have her too. Even though, not going to lie, I do prefer Jazz Ray Cole's um, depiction of Claire. I feel like she had more dipped and uh, just more going on. But... We're going to see if I still feel that same way once we get into it. But with all that being said, child, if I do say so myself, honey, I have milked this cow dry. And I'm thoroughly appreciative for the exchange of vibes. And if you're feeling synchronized, please do me a divine design and like, share, and subscribe. So that you can be one of the first to be back through these queenly quarters for the next time. And be sure to bless my comment section with your questions and conversations. And as always, I bid you in our ways like love, healing, and liberation. Emphasis on liberation. Mwah.